Hello guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Today in this video, we're hopefully going to get this all started up. We're going to go over some pre-flight checks, make sure the fuel system and that's actually fuel tight, and uh, start on the wire in the car. Put the loom in, ECU in, mount everything up, and then do some chassis wiring as well. So we'll get right into it. So what I've done here is I've got a battery hooked up. A uh, fuel pump is obviously in there, and we're going to hook up these leads. And hopefully, hopefully we get no leaks. Okay. And we have a drip here. So I'm gonna have to sort that. Everywhere else looks okay. And as you can see now, the loom is in. So, uh, eight injectors obviously, EGT, coil packs, just all the wiring is all in. Nice and neat, and it's pretty tucked out of the way, I didn't even mean that, but it did turn out quite nice and slim, so uh, the bay is looking pretty clean in my opinion. Now, into here, I just need to mount the battery, and then I'll make a tray for the ECU and stuff like that, and uh, start plugging things in. The actual chassis wiring over there is going to need a bit of work, and same with this as well, so... Um, we'll get to it though, it was just basically a lot of five minute, you know, quickly stuff to try and get things going. So uh, now I can go back over it all and take a wee bit more time. So there we have it. Um, I've just got the two relays up here, one for fuel pump, one for ECU, because uh, the, the fans now are actually controlled PWM, so they'll just get a feed direct to them. And then I'll use these outputs here to control fan speed. Um, so I'm not got too much here to connect up. CAN bus, um, I've got like launches and speed and cruise control inputs and stuff like that so um, the biggest one is probably going to be the pedal position sensors um, so, and main ECU power and stuff like that as well so um, I'll just basically hook that off of here and take the main power from here so not, not a lot to do to be honest with you. Well it started raining again naturally but I've got the ECU in and uh, the relays now are all ready to go. Uh, I need to figure out actually some chassis wire and stuff like you see it's a bit of a mess over there so I've Jimmy rigged some wires uh, I've got ignition on now but uh, oh fuel pump works as well so that's good uh, that's all controlled by the ECU so obviously the ECU works too so uh, ah nice so we have got ignition power but I need to find out why when I switch it off uh, it doesn't go off and so now, if I crank it, we should get some sort of crankage. So, ignition on. Yeah. Sound. Yes! So we have cranking. That's positive. Next stage is hook up the ECU and see what it's seeing. Right man, um, release accelerate pedal, right, put it down slowly right to the bottom, okay, so a lot of the throttle, off, back on again, on, I'm sorted, okay, so, uh, DCT boxes are all on, let's have a look, fuel pump, this one, so test, Started. So I'm going to go and test this output here for the fan. <laughs> awesome. Let's see if we can see an RPM. Try again. Fuel table. I think we're going to get a D to give this thing a crank. Better make sure it's right in it. And there it is. Thankfully. And I think we're ready to start it. So we'll just wing it. Um, copied a lot of settings over from the last car. So it should maybe go anyway. Get the VM meter on so I can check loads of stuff. 
Um, right, my man, go and try and crank it, see if uh, two things. Fuel pump on, try and crank it, see if it starts. Okay. Holy fuck! It's alive! <laughs> oh man! Right, uh, put that on again. Right, I'll probably need to give it more idle duty because um, she died off there. So, um, okay, go for that again. Log it. There we go, more idle duty. 1800 RPM, I'll bring it in a wee bit, eh? Uh, yeah, go for it, yeah. yeah she is lean there. So I'll, I'll turn on, uh, yeah. As you can see there, it just goes super lean, so... I'll add fuel in anyway, see if it... She should keep it alive. She's so smooth, man. What? Nice and quiet, too. Obviously, I didn't go for big lumpy cams or anything like that. So, uh... <laughs> Oh, yes. Having a strange issue here. Uh, um... EGT1 seems to be very, like, a lot colder. Uh, and I've, I've done the fuel trims as well, and I'm adding 50% extra fuel into that one cylinder and it still drops. If I put this to zero, the thing pretty much runs on three cylinders. So I might actually swap the injectors around in case it's an injector. Give it a wee rev, my man. <laughs> so quiet, isn't it? Oh, I love this. We take life. We have a nice low down cam. Not only that, is to be honest, at the back, I did put my little makeshift silencer in there. But, eh. Uh... <laughs> oh, I'm buzzing. The thing's alive, eh? The engine build, fully forged built. We're trying to get the thing up to temperature, but the fan is actually working a little bit too good, so I have to be like lower down the PWM duty of it. So just now I think I'm running, actually I'll show you. So here we have coolant temp which is 83.5, and the fan is running at 41%, so obviously it goes up to 100. But I can't actually get it to go above 83, so I'm probably gonna have to lower this down even more to try and get the temperature up. So how I adjust basically how the fan works is you just go to outputs, obviously I've controlled this, fan speed, and I just have a little map here. As you can see, this is the temperature we're at just now, and that's the percent duty, and it just interpolates between the two. So I've got this down really low, and it's still maintaining a really low temperature, so that fan is working an absolute dream. Um, I checked the load as well. The fan doesn't pull too much, but the fuel pump pulls fucking 18 amps. Hi, just just now. So I've lowered the fuel pressure down a little bit. See if we can uh, get a wee bit more control or that a wee bit less amperage. It looks like I've got a little bit of a leak as well. It seems to be maybe coming from the the oil cooler line of some sort somewhere. I can't really see where it's coming from. I don't think it's any of my dodgy welds. So, uh, was it from a fitting from here? Nope. 
also I'm seeing a wee bit of oil around here, so uh, that's probably coming from a turbo drain. Yeah, I maybe not sealed that up enough, so uh, it's all shake down stuff, really. If it's just leaks I'm having to deal with, I'm happy with that. So what we've done there is I swapped over the injectors uh, from cylinder 1 to cylinder 2 because we knew what the EGT was the cylinder 2 and uh, no difference so it looks like that cylinder like either the valve clearances or something like that need to be done or maybe that's just how it idles you know that's maybe just how it is I'll need to take it out and actually get it in load before we see proper EGTs because obviously with the car actually idling the EGTs don't really mean a lot so uh, yeah no it should be good but um what I need to do now is need for the car to cool down, then I'm going to be pulling off the thermostat um, housing um, because that bush is leaking. Uh, but I have a pain in the arse really. I might actually pull off the inner manifold. No, I'm not going to do that. That would be a nightmare. Uh, <laughs> I'll take off these uh, pipes here. I should manage to get to it down here, so it um, shouldn't be too bad. I'm just trying to remember if I've used Allen bolts or if I had the starter motor in when I put that in. Might just need tightened up, but it's maybe cracked, and um, they can crack. I've seen them before, just because of plastic. So having a look around, and uh, as you can see here, oh, I forgot to tighten up that one, which is the red ho radiator hose, radiator hose that goes to the bottom. So that's where the leaks come from. It's coming from the cover. Um, I'm using uh, the K20 sensor, the K20 have a different pin out to the K24 so I use the K20 sensor. Maybe the o-ring's a little bit um, worn so that could be the issue there. Um, so uh, yeah! Oh yes! Uh, I actually need to do, to test, well I will drive forward uh, the DCT control but just now it won't because um, it needs a brake switch input and I've not done the chassis wiring yet so the chassis wire needs to be done to send the voltage to the brake switch which will then give me a brake switch on the ECU so because it doesn't go to ground it it's actually a 12 volt feed into the ECU to let it know that the brake switch has been pressed But anyway guys, I'm buzzing to see this thing going again. I've got a few things to sort, so uh, I'll crack on with that. And as always guys, stay safe, take care, and uh, we'll catch you in the next vid. Cheers.